New Hyundai, Santa Fe and Palisade have just overtaken the new Sorento in the soft SUV heavy tow sweepstakes. Kia must be so thrilled they went with the old tow bar just a few months back. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously, or you can click the card on screen now. But in today's report, 2021 Hyundai Santa Fe and the new Palisade are doing the whole joined at the hip media launch ballet today, and I've just been handed the specs, happily enough. A few months back, we learned the new Sorento is able to tow a maximum of two tonnes with a tow ball download limit of 200 kilos. At the time of that launch, Kia's top product planning dude, Roland Rivero, told me that this limit, which had originally been touted at two and a half tonnes, was reined back in at the 11th hour as a result of the investigation into the tow bar design and its suitability for two and a half tonnes. The platform and the powertrain can handle towing two and a half tonnes. Confirmation of all that came today, right, with the platform shared new Santa Fe running with two and a half tonnes on peak tow capacity and 200 kilos on the download. That's 25% more tow capacity than the current Sorento, the new one. Palisade, which is about 200 millimetres longer and has a 135 millimetre longer wheelbase than Santa Fe, as well as being 70 millimetres wider in the track and weighs about 100 kilos more, spec for spec, and which you'd think, therefore, makes it a superior tow platform, offers a maximum of 2.2 tonnes with 200 kilos on the tow ball. And the reason I'm told, it's a different platform. Palisade is also available as an eight-seater, which is kind of interesting if you have a large tribe to transport. You even specify eight seats or seven seats when you buy a Palisade, right? It can't be converted from seven to eight and back on the fly in the manner of a Kia Carnival. The seats are fixed. Seven-seat Palisades are twin buckets in rows one and two and a three-wide bench in row three, and the eight-seaters get a three-wide bench in both rows two and three, which accounts for the seating capacity difference. Basically, I just wanted to let you know all of this, mainly about the towing, as soon as it was announced, because towing is such a serious consideration for so many of you when it comes to selecting vehicles such as this. While I've got you here, these three SUVs are all excellent real-world tow platforms at the same time as being decent daily drivers with large seating capacity and excellent versatility for picking up stuff from Bunnings and things of that nature. And this is without entering Planet Insanity, right? With its three and a half ton tow capacities and the attendant crazy compromises that that involves. Sorento is essentially Santa Fe with different hair and makeup. And both brands hate me saying that, but mainly because it's true. Salient differences between the three being the tow capacities, the new eight-speed wet-clutch DCT in the diesel Sorento and new diesel Santa Fe, eight-speed epicyclic auto in the Palisade V6 and the Palisade diesel, as well as the Sorento and Santa Fe V6 variants, which are epicyclic auto, the same eight-speeder. V6 Palisade is a 3.8 litre GDI engine with slightly higher outputs than the 3.5 litre multi-point V6 petrol in the Sorento and Santa Fe. The V6 petrols are all two-wheel drive, while the diesels are all on-demand all-wheel drive. Diesel is the pick, in my view, right across those ranges. Better fuel economy, better low and mid-rev performance, and all-wheel drive for the win on that. Plus, the new DCT in Sorento and Santa Fe is pretty sweet. It's essentially the same transmission. They're about to slip into the i30N DCT, and I can't wait to get my hands on that. Full review on the Palisade and new Santa Fe in coming weeks. I just wanted to share this with you as it breaks, lest you zig when you should have zagged on the showroom floor just before Christmas. <laughs> Now, before I let you go, quick shout out to Russell Pabst, a loyal viewer who sent me a package in the snail mail recently 
containing this fine 2020 FO shirt. Russell clearly going above and beyond to make Australia less shit while allegedly working from home. <laughs> Auto expert verified too. Who knew? These shirts are, of course, a work of fiction. Any resemblance to a real lubrication and or corrosion protection product with thousands of other uses, some of which are yet to be discovered, purely coincidental. In other news, WD-40 is good shit. Excellent shit, in fact. I'm a huge fan. And if you are looking for even greater amusement later on in the day, just go out and Google the term Toyota RAV4 plug-in hybrid fails Moose test. <laughs> the brave dudes at Technikensvald in Sweden have punted a RAV4 plug-in hybrid through their standard moose test and it bombed badly. It stepped right out and nearly rolled the front shitbox eco-tyre off the rim at comparatively low speed too, like unacceptably low. Good thing they weren't out on a real road swerving around a real moose with real traffic coming the other way. The Technicans Vale dudes are incidentally almost certainly on Toyota's blacklist by now, having highlighted the propensity of the Hilux to park on the roof in exactly the same test in 2016, as well as the failure of the RAV4 hybrid, not the plug-in one, just the standard hybrid, in exactly the same test last year both of which incidents catalyzed hasty dynamics revisions from the big T. And all I can say about that is hat trick. Dudes. Einstein, of course, famously said that it was nuts to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. What a pity the dynamics dudes at Toyota didn't pay attention to that fateful lesson back in high school. Thanks for watching. 